Good morning, good afternoon or evening, depending on where you are in this wonderful, beautiful world. We're going to go for a ride out across a place called the Cranbourne Chase to the ancient town of Shaftesbury. It's a really beautiful ride. Now light is everything, light is always king. As you can see, the clouds are pretty heavy up in front, but look at this beautiful light that we're riding through right at this moment. If we're really lucky, we might get some gaps in the clouds when we get over towards Shaftesbury and across the chase, because the scenery is stunning. If we're not lucky, it'll do what it's just done now, and it will start to cloud over. Notice how different the light looks as soon as that happens. But either way, I hope you enjoy the ride, because it is a pretty ride. We're leaving the New Forest, we're heading out into Dorset, a beautiful county. This is a really pretty little place, isn't it? So it's an old mill house. Let's just pull over here so you can have a quick look. Probably on private land, probably shouldn't be in here. Someone will come and shout, get off my land. <clears throat> Alderholt Mill. So it's an old country mill house and next to it, you've got the stream. So the stream runs down through here. It would have once powered a water mill in there where they would have made flour and ground and made bread. And I love the fact that there's still flour for sale here and a tea room. What a beautiful place to come and sit on a lovely, lovely sunny day. Let's continue our journey on up towards Cranbourne. I'm going a very windy sort of a back route. I'm not going the direct route. A lot of what governs where I go is traffic. If I'm riding along and think, oh really? There's a load of cars and I'm looking at the back of a great big ugly van. I'll just kind of go down a side road and go, well I wonder what's down there. Where does it go? It's all an adventure. It's all about being an explorer because that is what we need to do as photographers as well as motorcyclists. We need to explore light and new places. Look at these wonderful colours we've got going on here. You've probably noticed already, when you get that little bit of light, that little bit of sunshine come sneaking through those coloured leaves. They just come alive and look amazing. We've got some blue sky going on up there. Let's hope we get some little pools of light because when we get out onto the chase, the Cranbourne chase, it'll look absolutely spectacular. Uh oh, gridlock. <clears throat> and so we come down into Cranbourne Village, a wonderfully old, old village. And do you know what? I can smell bonfires, all this gorgeous autumnness going on around. And people are burning the leaves from their gardens and all that kind of stuff. And it just smells wonderful. This is all part of the joy of exploring on a motorcycle. Let's just pop round here a bit. I just want to show you a little bit of Cranbourne Village. This is a real traditional kind of English country village. It's a rural town. It would have all been farming and all that good stuff. I should have researched the history, shouldn't I, before coming out. But I just thought, hell, I've been in the office all morning. It's a really, really beautiful 
smashing little place. That's it. We're out the other side. <laughs> it is not big. Let's do a Yui and go up the other way and join the main road up onto the Cranbourne Chase. I'm really hoping that some of these little gaps in the clouds will widen because when we do get up there it's going to look absolutely amazing because you'll get searchlights on the ground. We may even get some you know rays of light coming down from the clouds across the ground. It would just look amazing if we're lucky. lovely light going on on those trees right now and I guess you're probably thinking Brown why haven't you stopped to take a picture well I could I might actually coming around the corner here but what I don't want to do is to miss looking out across the bottom of the Cranbourne Chase that's kind of beautiful up there isn't it you see even looking through a GoPro you can see what makes the shot even sitting on a motorcycle just pointing the camera at the right light look now it's a lot less interesting isn't it it was far more interesting when the light was coming through those trees we were looking against the light light is king I say it all the time but we're going a little bit of a journey it's it's a great ride you know that's what this is all about sitting here smelling these autumn leaves is just so gorgeous we've just crossed the county line into Wiltshire and look at this wonderful scenery I do love that tree on its own up there but what I want is light and I think the Blackmore Vale in Shaftesbury is going to be a really good choice for a little bit of sunset action but also I want to show you the Cranbourne Chase and the valleys themselves to enjoy this ride I mean look at all this gorgeousness we are now coming into the small village of Tollard Royal look at that light again look at it you see what a difference it makes you see how it just woke everything up just now I was coming up a, a pretty little road there was a pool of light on the other side of a field with some beautiful trees on the opposite side some willows and some of this wonderful autumn color I thought I've got to stop and show you guys I turned around went back hit the cameras to go came back around the corner so I could stop and go look at this maybe you can grab it quick with your phone it was gone it was gone and that is why I'm always banging on at photographers to learn how to set up their camera to learn how to pre-visualize how to make it second nature in underneath those clouds look what a difference it's making that is just gorgeous and if we were to get some land down here in the valley it will be so beautiful let's just pull over here and have a little look at this what we want is this light over there let's just stop here and contemplate look you see how the light is just coming down here lighting up that side of the hill which way is it going I'm going to unpack my cameras and see what happens if we do get some great light <laughs> look at it lifting up now days like this are just magic in the time it took to stop and get my camera out everything changed but look I'm going to have to just shoot this because I haven't got time to mess around look this is what I mean about if you get a little pool of light somewhere landing in one place in the valley 
it looks spectacular. I couldn't talk about settings or anything then, because look, if I just quickly start videoing, look, there's that pool of light. It's coming off the house already. It's disappearing, and now it's too late. The moment has been completely missed. All I did was grab the camera, look, check the histogram in the viewfinder and because it was okay because the histogram said yes nothing's clipping either end i just shot it i didn't even bother to look at the numbers or anything simply because there wasn't time that happened much too fast had i managed to see bloody motorcyclist making all that noise had i managed to watch that light coming across which is what i wanted to show you then it would have been really really cool because what you can't see behind me is an absolute bonanza of light rays happening in the sky. I mean, look at those bad boys. They're going on across the top there. That is the Blackmore Vale beyond this hill. And that is what I'm hoping we will have later on. So why aren't I rushing over there? Because we've got some hot action happening over here. You see that light down there? It's sitting down here in the valley, nestling there. Now, what have we got to the right of it? Another little patch of light there, highlighting some delightful sheep. But look, a little clump of trees on the top of a hill. What do you think might happen if that or that pool of light were to hit those trees? And it is just about doing it. It's not quite as powerful as it was on the others, but. Let's flick back to photo mode and take that shot very quickly. I think I've missed the moment. Let's put the trees right down low because I kind of like that lonely look. Look at those clouds. Isn't that a gorgeous sky? You see what I mean though? We just missed the moment with the tree shot. It's still not bad, but here comes another bigger pool of light. I'm not showing you video in here because I just don't have the time. Here comes the light. Look, is it going to hit the trees or is it simply going to miss them? It's just going to hit those trees, look. Band of light on the trees. I'm going to take the exposure down, just a hint, quickly that way. Turn the camera up the other way, and let's go tighter. Focus, and shoot it. Look how quickly I'm having to work to make that work. But we got a couple of really, really lovely shots out of this place. Now what I want to do is go into Shaftesbury, let's see what we can do with those light rays that we were looking at, and I need some petrol.
so here we are in Shaftesbury. It's looking quite busy. I didn't expect there'd be so many people around. So let's park around the corner somewhere and then go and have a look, see what we can find. There's a great lookout out that side where we can go look at the Blackmoor Vale. I was hoping to park around here, but that ain't gonna happen. So we just gotta go a bit further away into the car park. I hate having to use the car park. I'm special. I ride a motorcycle for goodness sake. It's great, isn't it? Just as I'm gonna start filming something, the car alarm goes off. Welcome to ancient Shaftesbury. Look at this. You can see we're going somewhere really, really old. Now, whether or not we're going to get the shot I want, I don't know, because chasing light is always a tricky thing. But I wanted to bring you down here and just show you this place. <coughs> a very popular photo location indeed. Look at that. Isn't that a great view? So what have I got? 18 to 55 lens on. I'm just going to use the normal lens. But you're going to see this is going to look pretty dull very quickly. Let's have a look. So what sort of composition? Well, I really like having the wall, the ancient buttressed wall here on the right. And we've got the houses. Now, I think these windows work quite well. But you want to get them straight. Be careful, because if, if it's all sort of a bit like that, really dull, boring and awful, isn't it? So what are we going to do? I think we could shoot from here, but I also think it could be pretty cool just to do the old knee bend thing, the choreography of composition, get down a little lower and make a little bit out of these cobbles in the foreground, because it might just help. I think that's actually a bit nicer than shooting from up here at eye level. Let's do it. Then we'll go and see, because we might get some sunset action. Personally, I'm doubtful. <clears throat> what sort of settings do we want? We're going to go low down and try and use some cobbles. Then I'm going to suggest a smallish aperture, simply because we want to get that depth of field in there, don't we? So, aperture, let's go with, I would have thought f11 should be plenty. Now, what sort of shutter speed? Well, shutter speed superpower is doing nothing here apart from exposure. The only movement it's going to have to work with is going to be camera shake if you wobble the camera. So let's get down low and have a look. I've got a 40th of a second at 400 ISO. I'm shooting exactly what the light meter is telling me and the histogram says everything should be pretty good. So let's just, where will I focus? Just a little down the slope. Not far because we've got a widish lens. I'm not going to use the window. Well, let's try two. Let's do one using the window, really strong on the side, like that. See what you think. And we'll do another just using the edge of the doorway, something like that. There is a little bit of colour in that sky. I don't know which you prefer. I think the window shot is possibly a little bit too much. The wide angle lens is just kind of distorting it slightly. Let's go at the top, look across the Blackmore Vale and just see if there's something a bit more interesting that we can do up there. I'm just looking after them. You're looking after them, yeah. yeah. Can well, you hey. do a little trip? <laughs> <laughs> We're taking care of ourselves. <laughs> is it, Mum? Well, as long sure. as you're enjoying having a walk yes, around exactly, here, eh? Exactly, exactly. That's the good thing. Enjoy. We might get a sunset if we're lucky, you never know. Oh, really? well, if we're lucky. We're going to go back to tea. <sighs> That's fantastic. Can I come for tea? <laughs> <laughs> so here we are with a magnificent view across the Blackmoor Vale. Are we going to get the kind of light, the kind of sunset I'm hoping for? I'm not sure. There is a possibility. Over here, on the horizon, there is a break between the clouds. You see there's a patch of light over there. If the sun comes down through there and it washes across this, we're going to have massive side light. It could look absolutely superb. 
may or may not happen. Why didn't I go chasing after those beams of light earlier on? Because we had some great light in a great location. It's no good to go chasing light because it just doesn't really work because light moves, light changes, work with what you've got. So what do we got here? Well, we've got some very interesting sky, haven't we? Look at these blues and pinks caused by the lowering sun, that pinky color. I think it looks great. Even though the light on the ground is pretty flat, I think there's some good stuff going on here. So let me get my camera sorted out. Let's see if we can get a couple of frames of this. I'm more out of breath than I should be. <laughs> it is a steep hill, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Camera ready. Let's see what we can do. Now in the distance, we've got the hill over here. Let's see if there's anything we can do with that. But I would like to try and capture some of these colors in the sky because they're really rather lovely. Now I am a minimalist freak, I know. I like negative space. The hill there with those colors in the sky, I think that's kind of interesting. We don't want to get any of these twigs invading. But as we open up, look, look at these colors we're getting up there in that sky. I don't know. Let's see if there's a couple of shots to be had. I think it's over there in that area of the sky. <clears throat> now, what are we gonna need? We don't need a very small aperture, do we? Because we're not playing around with depth of field. We're only using aperture for exposure in this case. Why? Because all well, the action is happening beyond the infinity point of the lens. Because the light level is low, let's open that aperture up. Let's get a flood of light coming in. What sort of exposure are we going to get? 400 ISO will give me 160th of a second on a 35 to 55-ish millimeter lens. So that'll be fine. And I've got image stabilizing. I could even take the ISO down, but 400 is cool. It'll work. It'll be good. Now stop talking, Brown, and see if we can get some shots of these really rather lovely clouds. What about the exposure? Well, if we just do what the camera says, Let's see. It's okay, but you see what I mean? It desperately needs a wash of light across the ground to wake it up somehow. I'm gonna shoot something going in this direction because there's some nice layers of colors. We've got a little church down there. I'm wondering if I can line it up in between some twigs. Something like this. Now that's not bad. Doing a vertical composition, something like that. Actually, I quite like that because that band of cloud is really rather interesting. It's quite nice. It might even work with a longer lens on. So focus on the church. I don't have to worry again about the aperture size. That's not bad. This is where you discover whether you're going to use a long focal length or a short focal length, what your composition's going to be pre-visualizing what might happen with the light. We might have arrived and the light was perfect. It wasn't, so use this time productively. If you're not sure how to use this time productively, please check out my masterclass in photography because it will give you effortless and easy camera skills. How are you gonna be able to rapidly and quickly work with a situation such as we had up on the chase when there was some gorgeous light going on and it was like a mad scramble, get the camera out. You saw how quickly that changes and I can help you master all that stuff. I'll show you all my settings. I'll show you everything you need. Please click the little thing popping out up here in the top right. Go and check it out, try a free sample, it's 100% guaranteed. And if you don't like the sample, well, you don't even have to buy it, do you? I'll check back in with you in a minute. Hopefully we've got a bit more light. If we have, we have, and if we haven't, we haven't. Oh, shutter speed's getting low, 50th of a second. Up that ISO, let's go up to 1250 ISO. I've got the lens wide open now to try and get enough light in because it is getting a bit dark. Focus on the church, put the church at the bottom. We're shooting vertical and histogram looks happy. Not bad. I wish we had the little bumpy bit of cloud directly above the church. I think that would have worked. But there is another one coming over to the right. Let's see if I can show you. Look, bit of video up here. We've got another little bit of cloud there. Now when that gets right on top of the church, I'll take another one. I think that looks really rather nice. Let's just darken that exposure just a tiny little bit from what the camera wants because the camera's trying to make it brighter than it really is and I want detail in those clouds. Focus on the church 
Now we've got that cloud right above it and just click. It's sort of holding it together, isn't it? I've taken a few shots here whilst looking to see what would happen. And I think, as you can see, there's a variety. But of course, the shot which really won prime position today was up on top of the chase. Absolutely spectacular. This is where you are the most important thing in all of your photography. Get out there, do things that you love doing because it'll put you in the right frame of mind. For me, it's riding a motorcycle out here in the world. For you, it could be something else. But light is key. And the most important thing of all is being able to do this stuff without thinking about it. So please go and try a free sample. Click the little thing over here. And beyond that, be well, have a great time. And if you enjoyed this video, please like, share and subscribe. And if you want to support my channel, look at the little thanks button. Maybe give that a click too. Be well, I'll see you next time.